and welcome to Mischief News from Singapore. We will be continuing with more marbling this month. And this video is all about Ebru marbling, which originated in Turkey. It involves floating ink on a thickened liquid called size and then combing through the ink to create these amazing patterns. It's a bit more complicated to set up than Sumine Gashi, which we covered in our last video, but we'll show you all you need to know to get started. The items you need to prepare are size. This is a thickened liquid that the inks float on. Paper. You need to apply a mordant to your paper to help the ink bond with the paper. Inks. Different colored marbling ink. And tools to create patterns. First, we'll show you how to make size. And then we'll show you how to apply mordant to your paper before going into the actual marbling. You need two teaspoons of sodium alginate or carrageenan and 950 milliliters of warm water. Add some of the water to the blender jug and set off the blender to a medium speed. Gently add in one teaspoon of sodium alginate bit by bit. Add more of the water into the jug then slowly add another teaspoon of powder as before. Once that is all dissolved, add in the rest of the water and blend for a further minute or two at, on high speed. After it's done, pour it into a container and let it stand for at least 12 hours before using. We store it in the fridge and it keeps at least a week. We bought a marbling kit that came with alum powder for use as a mordant. Two teaspoons of alum powder need to be dissolved in 950 milliliters of warm water. You can just do this in a jug with a fork. Once dissolved, Pour the mixture into a tray big enough for your paper size and soak each sheet for 20 minutes. Hang your paper up to dry, then store in a Ziploc bag or airtight container. Our instructions said to soak each sheet individually, but we put in two to three at a time and it still worked fine. tried these marbling inks from a kit, as well as India inks. Both worked well, but they didn't work well together, so it seems to work best if you use inks from the same range for each piece of marbling. To create patterns in the ink, you can use bamboo skewers and also make marbling combs to rake through the whole tray with one sweep. We made a simple one here from foam board and toothpicks. Traditionally, bunches of broom bristle are used to create a splattering effect, but it's a bit messy. Okay, so that's all you need to know to get started. Now we can get on with the fun part! Yeah! After you have poured the size into your tray about an inch deep, you can start dropping in your inks onto the surface. Usually, it's best to start with darker colours and work up to the lighter ones, but ultimately it just depends on how you want your pattern to look. The more ink you add, the more vibrant your colours will be on the paper. Some ink might drip down to the base of the tray, but that won't affect the design on the surface. Once you're happy with your colours, you can start to make some patterns with the bamboo skewer and combs. Combing can produce very intricate detailed patterns, whilst using a single skewer allows you to manipulate your ink stroke by stroke. Don't they look great? You can really just experiment and have fun with it.
When your pattern is ready, take a sheet of your paper and lay it slowly and evenly down across the surface. This part can be tricky and it takes some practice. Flip the paper over and your print is done. Let the sides strip off a bit, then you can hang it up or lay it flat to dry. You can reuse your size over and over. Just use scrap paper to skim off excess ink from the surface. It doesn't clean off completely, but it works fine if you're using similar colors. For more info, you can check out our blog at everytuesday.com. So every marbling does take up a bit more work, but it's really fun. Hope you enjoyed our video, and thanks for watching. Bye!